On June 7, 1998, three white men from the town of Jasper, Texas, brutally murdered African-American James Byrd Jr. by chaining him to the back of a pickup truck and dragging him three miles. When the dismembered body was found, it refocused America and the world's attention on the fact that racism and hate still exist. Hello, I'm Ernie Manoose. Over the next 30 minutes, we'll talk with James's mother, Mrs. Stella Bird, about what it's like to live through a personal tragedy while in the public eye, how one copes with such a crime, and what we can all learn from this tragedy. Does there ever come a time when the pain starts to go away, when you can get back to your daily life? Sometimes, but when you think you got it all made, then they'll probably show something on television or something in the newspaper refreshing it all yeah. over and over again. You just have to take one day at a time. Is it difficult when you see, like we came up today, in a TV truck, when you see yet another one coming in front of your house, does that bring back too Mem much? Memories, yes it does. Yeah. You bring back memories because sometimes I, I can't even stand to see a, a pickup truck, you know. Yeah. Because that's what they used to, when they killed him. And, and times I can see it. And I got the tapes here now with him playing the piano, but I haven't been able to watch it, not yet. Yeah hoping someday I can gradually put it all behind me. I heard that some of your children can't even have pictures up of him around the house because it's too hard to remember. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's like that. He was, he, he was, uh, you know he was around, and so he's missed very much. That's why we haven't had any more family reunions because it's just a part of it just missing. Yeah. I guess it always uh, would be like that. I just had two boys and all the rest of the girls, and so he was the third child, and the girls, and most of all, the, just looked up to him for different things because he was the big brother of the sisters. And you would just keep your life, and you just, he just liked people. Yeah. He's very missed. I look for him to come. I stayed in denial about about quite two years. I still didn't believe it really would happen. I just looked at that door looking for him to come in. And gradually I had to come to reality that he really was gone. But the public never let you forget it. Yeah. About it. Do you wish that it hadn't been so publicized? Do you wish that what had happened had stayed quiet? No, in a way I do, in a way I don't, because the world really didn't need to know about this hatred and prejudice. And then I hope something that was said, or something that we done, might would help someone else to have the same tragedy. Yeah. And, help, and tell them, you know, what they have to do to try to pull through it. You have to have a deep, rooting in God to come through a tragedy like this because you don't want to grow up in this world continue hating so only God can ease that part yeah. and then you see by them boxes of mail and I still get mail encouraging letters from both colors overseas and lost from here, and that helps a lot. So. It must be odd out of something with so much hate, yet you find so many people who never knew your family that shows so much love. Yes. He all, he used to laugh, tell us all the time, and say he was going to put Jasper on the map. And I think he did. I think he put the world on the map. There's so many people that really did benefit from his death. So now they have his picture and some of the textbooks and then uh, Rice University they give a scholarship every year 
and then a foundation year of scholarship. Just keep these memories of, alive, just to think of the good, goodness come out of it. Mm -hmm. And hoping they would, especially the young people, just don't strive on the hate part of it. And that's what we strive to do. Take it all. Some good. I can live through it. I know some good come out of it. Take me back. What was it like raising your eight children here in Jasper? Well, it wasn't too hard. Uh, back in them, those days, your neighbors and uh, all the elder people would help you raise your children. Not like today. Uh, Claire was the valedictorian of his her class. Melinda was a veteran Victoria of her class, and they always did. They make good grades. Yeah. They did wonderful in school. They said I was, I said, Mama, you was too hard on her. I said, no, I wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> I want you to be able to contribute something to society. Yeah. I had one boy, the baby boy, he moved from Dallas back here. And so... That helped a lot. Yeah. But nobody can feel the place of my other son. When everything happened, when all of this happened back in June a few years back, mm -hmm. how did you feel, hear about it? Uh, the, the sheriff and, and Billy Rose, and they believe one of the police come to. Did you have I any? had seen him. He was here to a shower the night before. He said, I'll see you tomorrow. And someone called, said they found somebody out there in Hoop Creek. I mean, at least I it was him. And uh, so uh, about the afternoon, about one or two, with the sheriff rose and, and this deputy and another guy come and told us what happened. Yep. Yeah. And so it was, made it so hard, you know. So in one minute, he was almost home when it happened to him. Almost about the hour he stayed across town. But he's about a block from that church. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How do you handle the anger that would come from hearing something like that? Uh, it's one preacher from, I believe up around San Antonio, sent me some tapes. And he had a tape that it really did fit my occasion. Most time I go and put that tape in, pass me not, and he's sweet I know, and I I played that tape to that moment pass over. Mm -hmm. Because you couldn't help, for, and you think about it, you know, you get angry because I'm human. Right. And then, and I had to really trust in the Lord because lots of people that you really did trust, and, and then you realize how they took advantage of you. And it was people's the magazine thing was coming four day. It didn't care how we felt, don't seem like. On a statement, mm -hmm. three and four o'clock in the morning, the phone rang day and day night. And I, they really didn't seem to care what really what we was going through. They want a story, uh, taking pictures where they can make a a document, it's all kind of different stuff. And half of them would write and pass that thing, wouldn't so for the One lady had called with that other book, last book, and I told her I wasn't answering in no book. And she wrote all that, half that stuff is not true. She wrote in it. And then you have to deal with all that. Mm -hmm. Then deal with the tragedy of his death. How soon after you heard what had happened to James did the whole, and I hate to use the word circus, but all of the stuff start happening. How long did you have just for your family to know about this? Oh, we didn't have any. That happened that Sunday, and it, they caught the men that same day, and the word spread, and we didn't have no peace. And when I did get to the church to the funeral, we could not have, they had to make room for us to get up in there. They just looked at me, they turned into a circus. Yeah. It seemed like. 
And then uh, they had food over to the schools. They didn't ask those anything. They just did what they wanted. People did what they wanted to do. Until the lady called and and said, you've got some bills down here. And charged it to me. Oh, my. They had a big old tent down at the church where I uh, go. They got all the tent and all that stuff. We didn't know a thing about it. There was a lot of press about a lot of famous people that came through, that came down here. Mm -hmm. How were they? They was fine. Did, did they come and bring peace and help, or was it more attention grabbing? Not with Jason Jackson. He was real nice. Yeah. He sure was. And uh, most of them in uh, prison, uh, Clinton, he had, he had me a phone. That phone he didn't put in. I had phone direct to the White House, talked to Reno and him. And uh, they was real nice. And, and uh, Senator Kennedy, he called me a lot. Yeah. And then uh, Faye Hurst, what was her name? All them senators, most of them senators. Senators called me and talked. He had a lot. And so when things wasn't going exactly right, things wouldn't go right. If I went, all I had to do was pick up the phone and call the White House. <laughs> <laughs> most people can't do that. <laughs> she did. Well, he had been called. He couldn't get through. So he just ordered and told him to put me on another line, put my phone in. But uh, see, God prepare you to go through all this stuff. Way down the road, see, I wasn't prepared for this. I wouldn't have made it because it was coming from every end. Some of them was coming wanting to destroy Jasper, and some of them was coming to build it up. And I said, nope, I don't want nobody else to go through what I'm going through. And what good would it do to burn up the time? People were going to have no job, and, and my son still wouldn't be back. Yeah. So all we ever wanted was peace and justice. That's all we ever asked for. Did you ever get that? Partially. Partially. We got the justice, it's partial justice, but it just keeps something else always going for the peace. Yeah. You didn't attend the trials. Your husband did, but you chose not to. I was to. there, but I went one time. I just couldn't go in. Was it too difficult? Mm -hmm. My kids and, and my sister and my husband, they went every one. I went to Bryan. I went, I believe it was Brewer's for about an hour. And that was it. Yeah. At some point in all of this, you became, in a sense, a political activist, not ever seeking it, but mm -hmm. the attention came to yes, you. Yes, it did. How do you deal with something like that? You weren't trained for it. But you hadn't planned it. I just continued being myself. Yeah. That's what I did. I just, what you see is what you get. So I just, you know, it didn't puff me up like it did, you know, lots of people, you know. I just stayed the same. You know, I know that something was history, and, and I just had to endure it until I just stopped a lot of reporters and, and magazines. I just had enough of it. I just stopped it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is there ever a point where you can separate the name James Byrd Jr. from the person you knew? <sighs> no. Uh, I just can't. Yeah. He, uh, he always be Jane Bird Jr. And, and so on to me, regardless of what they name after and, and whether that's just my, my child. That's the way I see it, just was my child. What does it mean to you to see that the Texas hate crime bill and law now has your son's name on it. I feel real good about it. That's one good thing come out of it. And uh, I felt real good about it. It takes him a couple years, but that was good. Maybe somebody would think 
before they do somebody else like that. Mm -hmm. you, have, you would have to prove so much to get any kind of conviction through the other law. You have to prove they was kidnapped. You have to prove they was all kind of things. But with, on this law, you don't have to prove all that to prove it was a hate crime. Mm -hmm. But since then, even after then, they went to his, to his grave and and they took uh, the name tag off and crossed there and, and put some stickers on there and, and said the Ku Klux Klan was being here. They did all that. I want to take you back to the hate crime legislation for a minute. And there was a story that had circulated about problems with getting it passed and they came and talked to you. Can you tell me about that? Yes. Uh, they wanted to take out protection, you know, that's, well, the lesbian and gay, for one thing, they, they had protection that built for them and anybody. Uh, they want to take that part out and would pass it. I told them that still would be hate. If they couldn't pass a bill, protect everybody, I just didn't want it. And so they, the next year they went on and passed it. I said, no, that's, that wouldn't be right. Even what a person is, they still need protection. Mm -hmm. You don't do things to people because they're not like you or your color ain't alike or they gay or a lesbian and all that. That's between them and God. Yeah. So they've kept it in there, and so it passed. They sent a car, sent a limousine at us, and we flew to Austin. So twice I had to go twice. And so I went back when, it, when he signed the bill and passed. We, I got his picture, got this picture in there. And so I told my one of these days I'll give that pen to his grandchild. <laughs> How sweet. Because she often, when she was coming, would ask where was he at. And uh, I said, maybe then I have, can tell what, what happened and, and show her some good come out of it. Yeah. What would you say you've learned from yourself from all of this that's happened? Well, I learned that uh, one thing is sad to say, but you just can't totally trust, put all your trust in everybody mm -hmm. that come. Cause lots of them really did this, some thing they say of this apartment. And uh, I just trust in the Lord and ask him to guide you. Yeah. And he won't lead you wrong. How do you relax today? Uh, is someone I still take time and and try to I guess a lots of letter from people they write now and, and having different problems and want to suggest what I would do and sometimes I just cut out different readings and good reading and poem and mail it to them. Less lots of the young people was in Houston in rehab uh, that they uh, somebody called me. And, or I'll give them a call or something, send it to them trying to make their day. Yeah. I find out doing something for other people help me forget my trouble. Yeah. And God knows that we had it since all this come up. Then both my husband, both I was in, you know, kind of bad health, and so like I said, we just take one day at a time. Now, Christian teachings teach us to forgive mm -hmm. people who do wrong unto us. Mm -hmm. Is there any part of you that can forgive the three men that did what they did to your son? Yes. How? It's hard. Like I said, it's hard. All I, uh, it's hard. We ask for justice to be done. And really, in the Bible tell you, you don't forgive others, he won't forgive you. And I, I, I search down in my heart and I make all kind of excuses 
that's Lord give me one reason why I shouldn't hate them. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I heard a man preach on the television. He said they done Jesus worse than that. He said with them thrones in his flesh, he looked down and said, "Lord, forgive me. I don't know what they done." I said, "Well, now nah, Jesus could do that. I'm not like <laughs> like, like Jesus. I pray to give me the strength, but I don't walk around every day." Wishing something happened to him with that, with that hate, but I'm really I'm not ready to become a bosom friends, right. you know. Why do you stay in Jasper after all that happened? Why didn't you move? That's a good question. I don't know why. I guess I've been here so long, and I never did like a too big a cry. And uh, we both love to fish when we was able to go and have, you know, things like that. And then some of the people here was was kind of nice to us. And I know you can't run away from your trouble. I said, I stay here in face I like to go to his grave up there. And once in a while I like to go down there and put some flowers on the park. And if I wasn't here, I couldn't do that. Mm -hmm. It was really hard the first time I uh, went, and the second time, I haven't been now in about six months. It's like it's been harder this month on me. And uh, I forgot to make up my mind, I, I just got to go up there to it, you know. I like to keep flowers and, and keep things. Uh, Around. If I had got a chance to just to see him, he would be so. I didn't have no clothes, you know. Right. And so it makes a big difference. A was big it difference. was it hard for you when all of the attention moved away? When the as much as you say it's difficult to have all of the camera mm -hmm. crews and the famous people coming by and all that, but when they all stopped coming. Did that all of a sudden seem like a big emptiness suddenly? Well, uh, in a way, then, it, uh, in a way, I need time to heal, and it's giving me a chance to heal. All alone, it was different more, and some of them never did stop writing. Except, oh. <coughs> but with all so much on, I didn't have. We didn't have a chance to. You need a healing process, and uh, I, I began to. They didn't stop on their own. I began to turn them on. Mm -hmm. Just said no. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you have hope for your grandchildren to grow up in a better world? I do. Do you think they'll see that? I don't know. They got some of them got to get a. Got to do better their own self. You know. Uh, you know, the world don't owe you anything. You, opportunities is out there. You get your uh, education or something and, 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 you know, and work. I taught all my children most of them to work. And, but some of these grandchildren, they want everything on a silver platter and then that part I don't like. Yeah. That part I don't, I don't like. And I, I just hope they realize what they're doing and get on the right track. Because, yeah. you know, money ain't everything, is it? No. Nope. It helps you to live. But you have to be careful how you, how you get it. Mrs. Bird, thank you very much for talking with us. Glad you come. What we all feel about this tragedy can probably best be summed up in a sympathy card that the Bird family received from a total stranger. It reads, To the family of James Bird Jr., I want to express my sincere sympathy for your loss. I find it hard to comprehend how anyone can have that much hate in their heart to commit such an unspeakable act of violence. No amount of punishment they receive will equal what they've done. 
Those of us who believe in God know that he alone has final judgment and that he will surely condemn them to burn in hell forever. Again, please accept my condolences. I truly hope that this horrible act will open people's eyes and bring our country, your town, and family all close to one another in compassion and love. May God bless your family in this tragedy. For a free transcript of this program, visit www.houstonpbs.org.